uh, outstanding long form writer, uh, has been a contributor to Saturday Down South for some time and, and has written some great stories and now has a new website, uh, Hall and Arena, the best in sports history. Uh, I'm telling you, this is some, some neat stuff. Uh, there are a lot of websites. We know that, but most of them are geared toward, uh, the contemporary, the now what's going on, what's going to happen. And not necessarily the great sports history that uh, in this fast-paced world that we sometimes forget about. I know when I get a, you know together with some buddies from time to time, we'll reminisce about great games. Remember this, remember that. Uh, well, Al Blanton with Holland Arena is doing that all the time. I'm looking at a couple of the stories right now. The day Emmett Smith ran all over Alabama, I remember that game. I was at Legion Field in 1987 when that happened. Um uh, Yes, Virginia, there was a Chaminade, a story by Chip Nation on the website when Chaminade, a little school in Hawaii, beat Ralph Sampson in Virginia. Uh, Let's play two, a brief history of Southern football doubleheaders by Jimmy Creed. I remember those days when Alabama and Auburn would play a doubleheader at Legion Field and other places did it too. These are things that get lost in time, but Hall and Arena is bringing them back. Good morning, Al. Morning, Gary. How you doing? Doing great. I do a pretty good job of of describing your new website right there. Yeah, I think I may just need to sit back and let you talk about it. You did a great job. Well, tell tell us more about it because it is it is interesting. We talked on the phone the other day uh, because, in as I said, there's not many concepts that people haven't already come up with. It's hard to find something new. It's hard to find a niche, but you feel like potentially you've done that with Hall and Arena, the history of the best in the history of sports. I think so. I mean, in in today's world, it it the the concept that we've rolled out is so counterintuitive. I mean, if it didn't happen 15 minutes ago, you know, people aren't worried about it. And looking at things from a historical perspective, you know, uh, in today's microwave society, that's just not something that, that people think they're interested in. But um, when I started this and when I, when I came up with the idea of Hall and Arena, it really derived from that ESPN 30 for 30 series. And, you know, I would watch. I mean, I just, I just ate that stuff up every time a documentary came on on ESPN. I, I would watch it, whether it was Catholics versus convicts or uh, the Duke lacrosse scandal, which was the, it was called Fantastic Lies, um, and then the creme de la creme of all the the documentaries is the the OJ saga, um, the five Ford series that they came out with by Ezra Edelman, um, and then the most recent is the Last Days of Night. So I would just. I would watch these and and I would just think, you know, people have got to be thirsting for more of this type of content. That's right. And I certainly was. And so um, we really want to do three things with Hall and Arena. Number one is relive great sports memories, Um, whether that's a great team or a great game or great players. You know, we want to sort of jog people's minds of maybe a great player that they used to idolize when, when they were growing up. Uh, the second thing is we want to look at sports from the big picture. You know, everything now is is about the now and getting news. And, mm-hmm. and so we want to put, um, you know, current things that are happening in sports in a historical context. And the last thing is that we want to be preservationists and storytellers. You know, there are a lot of great stories out there that um, that we need to tell because if we don't, you know, we're going to lose them. Well, one thing, too, about your website, and I, and I – I mentioned several of the historic stories, you know, aspects that are on there, but you do do current stuff too. You do it in a little more of a feature uh, type way. I I mean, I see one here where you did a story back, uh, Jimmy Creed did one back in October, dominating UAB defense, ripping up the record book. Um, A story on Clemson by Justin Wilson, winners of three consecutive ACC crowns. Clemson has become what FSU once was. So you do current stories, yet you tie them in, even in your current stories. A lot of times you're comparing them just things that happened in the past. It, it really is a neat perspective from that regard that even when you write about something now, you can tie it in to, to, and compare it to something from the past. Sure. You know, and, and we've had discussions as a staff about this and, and, and you know, we've gone back and forth and, and I'm, I love the historical stuff. I, I, you know, and if we could just do a hundred percent of, you know, great historical articles in in long form, you know, I'd, I'd be happy as a mule and Saul Briars, but, you know, the reality of it is that we're living in 2018 and, um, you know, we want to, we want to be relevant. And so a lot of our articles 
are geared toward, you know, there, there may be something that's coming up. You know, uh, Steve Kirk, who writes for us, uh, just wrote uh, a piece on the, you know, reviewing the top five college football playoff games. So, you know, we, we want it to be relevant to what's going on, but then we're also looking back and sort of giving it that historical context and looking at things uh, in, in the big picture. Uh, one that I put together the other day was uh, ho-hum. It's another 10-win season in the books for Alabama. So, you know, uh, Alabama's won, you know, over 10 games uh, for the 11th straight year. And so let's look at that. But then let's also put these teams in this dynasty in context with other dynasties. And so what I did with that was compare this Alabama run to the Florida State run in, in the 90s, in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, even in through the 2000s with Bobby Bowden, where they were uh, in the top five for 14 straight years. And so um, it's just giving it a big picture, giving it a, a looking at sports from a larger context. Al Blanton with us uh, from the website hallandarena.com. If you haven't visited it, please do, because I admit uh, last night was the first time that I had visited the website. Al and I had talked earlier in the week and talked about it. And when I just listened to the concept, I was a little skeptical. Yeah, are people going to want to go read these long feature stories about, about things from the past? But I tell you what. When you go to the website, you'll be like me. You'll be hooked. I mean, you'll start reading stories, and next thing you know, like it was with me last night, I got home. You know, I, Al, I don't get home till after 11 o'clock after doing the 10 o'clock sports and have to be up in the morning of the radio show. I got to reading some of these stories. The next thing I knew, it was 1.30 in the morning. I said, shoot, I got to get to sleep. <laughs> but I, I want to yeah. talk to you about uh, specifically about a couple of them in a moment. But first, uh, let's take a phone call. Tom has called in on the Bud Light hotline. He's got a question for you, Al. So let's, uh, okay. let's fire up with Tom. Hey, good morning, Tom. Hey, good morning, Gary. Good morning, Al. How are you? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm good. You know, uh, I hadn't had a chance to look at the website, but I guarantee you uh, today when I get home from work, I will be getting on there checking it out. And um, uh, and I'm interested in a couple of things, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. I think the concept is fantastic, but I've always thought, because me and my buddies, we argue about the past all the time, and uh, and and we can't remember what player did what. And we'll argue till the cows come home. You know what I mean? And um, <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, and I've always thought that there was a market out there for people like me. Uh, for where are they now? You know, sports figures, uh, and, and uh, where are they now? And I'd like to get your take on that. That is a great point, and uh, we feel the same way. We, we uh, instead of calling it "Where are they now?" We're we're calling it "Catching Up With." Um, so, one that we're about to roll out next week is "Catching Up with Jake Coker." You know, um, this is this is a guy that you know only graduated a couple of years ago, but you know, what's Jake Coker doing now? And uh, yeah, that's fascinating. I, yeah, I mean, just uh, again, you know, just kind of. Um, again, catching up with them. What, where, where are they? I mean, you know, athletes and, and, and sometimes coaches, they sort of float into our lives and then they float out and then we, we sort of lose track of them. And so that's right. kind of one, one of the things that we want to do at Hall and Arena. Another one was Randy Campbell, who played quarterback at Auburn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's he doing now? And so we want to continue to... <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, that is something that we want to do. And, and another one is um, uh, another another segment that we're doing is looking back on the career of, and um, we're, we're rolling one out today about Bob Horner, who played for the Atlanta Braves. Let's look at cool. the career of Bob Horner. Let's, let's look at the career of Brody Kroll. And so um, we're going to, you know, we're going to be talking to people um, with that Bob Horner piece, I talked to the former Atlanta Braves player Terry Harper, um, who played with Horner in the in the eighties, and um, you know, hopefully, we'll be able to talk to Brody and you know, just talk a little bit about his career. But then, you know, what he's doing now, the Big Oak Ranch. So, oh, yeah. absolutely, uh, it's a great point that you make, and that's that's definitely something that we're going to be focusing on in the future. I'm all in, Al. Thanks for taking my question. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Tom. Uh, great Thanks, call. Man. All right, Al, uh, I'm, I'm at hallandarena.com right now. As I said, I read, uh, I read a number of the stories last night by you and some of your, your contributing writers, but one that really got my attention because I was actually, my first TV job uh, was at the old WHMA Channel 40 in Anniston, Alabama. And so 
started in 1982, and we covered the USFL. You know, that's that's one of the, the, the deals that we covered. And you've got the story uh, on here now on the site, Mr. Trump Goes to Birmingham. And it's a great yep. piece. Uh, you know, of course, now he's the president, but – and, and that USFL is just a fascinating league. There have been documentaries done. It, it you know, it, I think it could have made it had had there been a little more patience involved. But anyway, Donald Trump owned the the New Jersey Generals, and the Birmingham Stallions took out a whole uh, two page uh, ad in the Birmingham News, and you've got a picture of it, just really making a big deal out of the Generals marching on Birmingham, and and uh, you forget because he's now the president. But those of us are old enough. He's always been charismatic. He was always in the news. And, uh, you know, that when he owned that New Jersey team, he signed Herschel Walker. And that was a big deal when he bought the Generals for $6 million in September of 1983. And then in night, early 1984, brought that team into Birmingham to play the Stallions. And you forget about these type of stories until you read, until I read your piece and and that was a great time. I mean, there, I, you know, sure. I remember now how much excitement there was in Birmingham for the USFL and how, you know, in, in, in 1983 and 1984, it looked like this league was going to go big time. And to some degree it did. And, and to have uh, Herschel Walker and the New Jersey Generals and Donald Trump come into, come into Birmingham was a really big deal. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, not to, not to get political here or anything, but I love Trump and I'm absolutely fascinated by him. Um, he uh, has been super successful in business, and um, but then you're exactly right to to, to your second point. Um, what the vein that we want to hit at Hall and Arena is is this sort of nostalgic vein. You know, I grew up in in the '80s and '90s, and 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 when you think about Legion Field, and when you think about Alabama and Auburn and the Iron Bowl and, and the USFL and the Birmingham Stallions and UAB with Gene Bartow and, and Sonny Smith at Auburn, and, and there's a there's a sense of nostalgia that comes with that. And so that's what we want to hit on, you know, at Hall and Arena. We want to hit that vein. We want to take people back to that moment, you know, in 1984 when when the generals arrived, you know. The fun thing to me, I was a history major in college, um, and I, I never went and, and did that. But but I'm doing that now with Hall and Arena. I'm I'm able to combine my love of sports with my love of history. And the fun thing for me is getting down and doing the research. And so I you know I went to the Birmingham Public Library and pulled up these old articles. And you know to pull up an article where you've got a a one page ad that that you know this clever ad that the the stallions took out the Birmingham news that says war, you know, generals to march on Birmingham. Those are fun things, you know, to see. And another, um, another thing that happened that day when I went to research, um, about, about Trump coming to Birmingham, um, I talked to a guy at the library and he was telling me about Babe Ruth being in Birmingham, uh, coming to play at Rickwood field. And I think Babe Ruth, um, played nine times, uh, at Rickwood Field, and uh, so so that's a that's a neat little little artifact. But um, Babe Ruth also almost died in Birmingham. He was riding around um, over near Red Mountain, and uh, the guy that he was riding with it was one of those old you know Model T type vehicles, and they lost control of the vehicle and almost ran into a milk truck. And so anyway, you know those are just stories that. We want to preserve, you know. Mm -hmm. We want to bring out a Hall of Arena, and so it's it's fun to research and kind of, you know, dig up some of these stories. Here's one too that was written back uh, in November by Nick Norris prior to Alabama playing Mississippi State, and again, it's easy to forget this because of what's happened since Coach Saban got here. But when Mike Shula was the coach at Alabama, obviously as an Alabama fan, you wanted him to succeed. But the 2006 MSU Alabama game changed everything. A 24-16 loss in Tuscaloosa led to the greatest era in Alabama football history. And for context, people you know might have already forgotten that Sylvester Croom, who had been a candidate for the Alabama job, great player under Coach Bryant, one of Coach Bryant's favorites from Tuscaloosa, was a head coach at Mississippi State. They had lost 23 SEC road games in a row and came in to Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama 24-16. Without that, who knows if Shula wins that game? Maybe he survives another season. Maybe it changes everything in regards to Nick Saban. So I read that story and I was like, 
you know what? That that probably was the the loss by Alabama that paved the way for a change to be made following that season and to bring in Nick Saban. Now, Nick Saban, ironically enough, lost to Sylvester Croom in Mississippi State his first season in Starkville, right. but hasn't lost to Mississippi State since. Really good piece. Well, yeah, and we want to look at a rivalry and 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 look at it from again from a historical context. Let's, context. Let's let's pull back and look at this rivalry from thirty thousand feet, and you know, particularly with the Alabama Mississippi State rivalry, I think what a lot of young people do is they just they just kind of take it, and it's and it's nothing against against young people at all, but they just kind of take it for what it is, and there's no there's no historical context that that sort of goes with the game, and so we want to look at rivalries or games or you know teams and we want to put those things in a historical context you know Alabama brings history to the Alabama Mississippi State game Mississippi State brings history to you know if Mississippi State would have dominated Alabama over its 100 year career um, Mississippi State would probably go into the Alabama game with a different mindset a different attitude uh, Alabama goes into the, into the Mississippi State game every year thinking we're gonna win we're Alabama um, and that's no offense to Mississippi State, but history matters, and um, and and we just want to we want to put things in that context so that people can can see a rivalry or see a game differently than they might if they just look at it in a silo. Well, it, it's happening. I mean, it is a great website. Again, folks, as we're just about out of time, go to hallandarena dot com. It's uh, it's free. All the feature stories, the latest one. Uh, that's that's uh, heading the website right now is it's always sunny in Auburn a great piece on Sonny Smith who of course is a regular on uh, Wimp and Berry's inside the locker room uh, show here on Tide 1029 and 100.9 I read that piece uh, Sonny Smith is a is just a, a great gentleman and a funny guy and I think you'll enjoy that piece too in Alabama's Heisman history story that Al um, Road and we were talking earlier about the SEC championship game and how the championship games could be in jeopardy if the college football playoff expands. Al's got a piece, the one that started it all. We talked about that 1992 game. And Al, I have not read that piece yet, but before we let you go, I said earlier on the show, if Florida wins that game over Alabama, these these conference, I don't know if you've written about this because like I said, I haven't read it, but these conference championship games might have not ever gotten off the ground. Yeah, it, it was so huge uh, that Alabama won that game and, and it, it did. It it did more for college football than just, you know, than just p- present a good game. I mean, it really spurred the other championship games and it made, it made the other conferences, you know, get off their butts. Well, man, I've enjoyed it. I wish we had more time. We'll, we'll visit again, uh, again, also as well as uh, hallandarena.com. Al still contributes to Saturday down South and, uh, uh, just holds down the fort there in, in, in Walker County, right? You still hold down the <laughs> fort up there. In it's tough, man. It's tough. <laughs> Thank you so much, Al. Thanks, Gary.